The Sussex Police and Crime Panel met on that day with this agenda. The only substantial item on the agenda was the proposed precept in item 4. A precept is an order issued by one local authority to another, specifying the rate of tax to be charged on its behalf, in this case, what the Sussex Police Commissioner and the panel order that Sussex householders are to be made to pay for policing in the next financial year. That item is of sufficient importance for one to expect good attendance from an experienced panel of elected members. That was not the case on the 24th of January. This is the panel published currently on the panel's website but one-third of the original first-choice councillors have been replaced since November 2012. On this occasion, the panel's chairman was too ill to attend. The deputy chairman was the chairman, and Councillor Snowling sat with the superior beings on the high chairs as a deputy deputy. We start with apologies for absence. Um, apologies for absence have been received from uh, Councillor St Pierre, um, um, uh, James Walsh and obviously from uh, Councillor Brad Watson, uh, Councillor Warren Morgan, Councillor Paul Wotherspoon as well, and there are substitutes appointed for a number. We were not told the number or who they were, but from this screen I suppose that eight of the original 18 elected councillors might be present, seven Conservative and one Liberal Democrat. The last person on the list was a Sussex policeman for most of his working life and should not have been allowed a vote on the precept. The panel has by law 20 members. How many attended this meeting I cannot say. One knew from early on that there were two members on the high chairs and viewers were shown a line of eight other members. Others, if any, might appear if they spoke. Um, right, item four. For proposed precept and draft budget. For the precept item, the agenda was accompanied by a document from the Commissioner's ex policeman chief executive, the chief constable, and finance officers from the Commissioner's office and from Sussex Police. A bureaucratic synonym for spending money is investment, so under a subheading investment proposal, one could read the Chief Constable's assessment of the need for more money. And to quote the document, the investments are presented across three critical areas. These were areas for which extra money was requested. What would the Commissioner herself think of this? Um, and as I said before, and uh, you know, I, I say again, when I go out to the public all the time, I'm, as a Conservative, for me, raising taxes just it shouldn't be done. We should be putting money back into people's pockets. They're hard working. Um, I was elected on a mandate to freeze the council tax last year and um, I stand by that. It is conceivable that your election promises were calculated to appeal to the paid up Conservative Party members who selected you as the only Conservative candidate and to any Sussex electors who might vote for you. So, what do you think of the Chief Constable's plans? You are a Band D taxpayer in Sussex. You currently pay £138.42 pence for your policing. I think that is untrue. Within a single tax band, there are differences between tax levels for different areas. And under the rules that are currently standing, although this may change and we, we don't know at the moment because DCLG haven't firmed up on this, but currently as it stands, because we are in the lowest quartile, it permits us to raise the um, precept by a maximum of five pounds without triggering a referendum. And that, uh, that equates to the 3.6%. I think you have money and percentage the wrong way round. The government's limit for Sussex without requiring a referendum might be 3.6%, not a certain amount of cash, and that would involve some 10 pounds extra for some householders. And as the limit for counties is likely to be only a 2% increase, presumably if the police take all they can get, that will involve other services being treated less well. Now the proposal you've got before you is not um, a proposal to 
uh, cover the, any cuts that are having to be made in the force. This is added um, investment around three key areas, two very significant risk areas. Was it three or only two? Perhaps it was three key areas, two of which are very significant. One you've just recently heard about, that's the cybercrime. The investigation of computer crime is not a new development requiring increased resources. I suffered it in 2004. The criminal was the dishonest and corrupt PC Francis of Sussex Police and any investigation of it was prevented by the thoroughly dishonest Detective Inspector Preddy, who prevented any investigation of deliberate sabotage of computers on which I had recorded what the scum PC Francis had said to me when he was supposed to be investigating attacks on me by an ex-policeman and his associates who had smashed their way into my back garden. But, um... The other area is serious and sexual offences. And the proposal that the Chief Constable has given me around this is to invest in 36 um, serious um, solos. What's the acronym for solo? You'll have to re remind me here. Sexual offence liaison officers, that's it. I love policing acronyms, but sometimes they, they even catch me out. So this is to invest in 36 um, sexual offence liaison officers. LOL might be the appropriate acronym here. Sussex Police think, for instance, that quality victim care is essential in rape cases and that Sussex Police, not social services and the voluntary sector, are the people to provide it. I think that resources will be better spent on reforming the staff they already employ and supervising them more closely. An account of this contemptible behaviour appeared in a Sussex paper. Sussex policewoman to win compensation after sex discrimination. The policewoman, who had been trained to use a self-loading pistol and an MP5 submachine gun, claimed she suffered taunts and verbal abuse by male colleagues while serving at Gatwick, where she was the only woman in a team of 18 men. She claimed fellow officers made comments about her breasts and called her names. She was also upset by topless pictures of women in magazines left around the station. A policewoman has been awarded £275,000 in damages after sexist colleagues forced her out of work. She could also receive £300,000 from Sussex Police later this year under a ruling from an employment tribunal which has lasted three years. She was repeatedly taunted by her male colleagues at the firearms unit in Gatwick, who were said to have called her a daisy, a whoopsie and a lipstick. I'm very happy to take uh, questions on this, but, um, and, and the third area is the visible frontline policing as well. We've done quite an extensive public consultation around this, and, uh, and we've had 67% of respondents are in favour of, uh, of an increase. And of that 67%, 90% agreed with the proposed increase of £4.95. For me, if the, you know, I'm here to represent the public, and the public are saying, yes, we're behind you on this one. Yes, we're happy to do this. That, that for me, is the, the most important thing. I find your explanation unclear and possibly misleading. So I look at the tables from an appendix on consultation appended to the document published for item 4. An online survey was sent out to local authorities, who apparently were responsible for putting it online. 1,991 people claiming to live in Sussex are said to have agreed, and 992 are said to have disagreed. Were police employees allowed to vote, and their partners and children and friends? And what about members of community safety partnerships, some of them panel members, who rely on police money, controlled by the Commissioner, for their funding? The current number of police employees would not be markedly different from the 5,500 of a couple of years ago. 
There are said to be about 1.6 million residents in Sussex, so each atypical online box ticker represented 536 other residents. We've had 67% of respondents are in favour of, uh, of an increase. And of that 67%, 90% agreed with the proposed increase of £4.95. I've been unable to find figures in the tables to make sense of that 90%. The only other survey was this garbage produced by Sussex police themselves, using public money in the hope of brainwashing the public. I cannot make sense of this. 883 people who didn't put down the phone, were asked by the police if they would be willing to pay a sum of money, which as far as I understand the system, relates roughly to a band D property. Some people do not pay council tax. Some properties are in lower bands, some in higher. As my two-bedroom property is band E, if I assumed that band E would require a higher figure, I might have agreed to a figure lower than expected. Unless I had paused to think that paying council tax has nothing whatever to do with being willing to pay it. That 59% of Sussex residents would pay additional council tax if they did not have to, I find incredible. I wonder how the questions were framed. Was the bait the promise of a much better service? Mr Chair, my proposal is that the panel supports a precept of 3.6% or a figure up to this amount, whichever is permissible without triggering a referendum. Those in favour of uh, councillors, please. Do you propose a second if those in favour, please? Uh, those against? Two. Any abstention? That's, that's duly carried. This video is already longer than intended, so any observations that I would want to make on item 9 will require a possible short sequel. For more than eight days I've waited in vain to read the minutes of this panel meeting, hoping to see details of attendance and, less hopefully, details of the vote on the precept. But I'm waiting no longer. Bye.